one of the key issues of making videos on ever evolving technologies like AI is they keep changing. With that change, we have to update our video content as well. Previously in our YouTube channel, I have posted a video on how to crack Agent 4 Specialist Certification. Even there, there is a story. When I recorded the video, it was AI Specialist Certification. While editing the video, Salesforce dropped a bomb saying they are rebranding it as Agent 4 Specialist and adding more Agent 4 related content to it. So I had to stop the edit project, I had to include all the resources that Salesforce provided uh, on how the certification could be and I posted the video. Later the rebranded Agent 4 certification has dropped and uh, the resources are pretty much same but different. Never mind. So uh, I got you covered right now like uh, this is the updated uh, syllabus for Agent 4 Specialist Certification. Thank you so much for providing so much of love for the previous video that encouraged me to create an updated video regarding Agent 4 Specialist Certification. Watch the video till the end, I'll discuss what are the exam topics that are, that are covered in this certification, what is the preparation that is needed to crack this certification and hacks on how to crack this certification. Without waiting further, let's get started. Let's break down Salesforce Agent 4 Specialist Certification. Uh, section by section uh, so that you can expect uh, you exactly know what to expect so first section is prompt engineering it constitutes about 30% uh, in the exam uh, approximately 18 questions in this section uh, you will generally get questions around when it is appropriate to use prompt builder and what are the user roles like prompt admins or prompt users uh, what are the user roles required to perform a particular set of action and uh, what are the considerations of uh, typing in a prompt like for example the structure the tone security and performance so these kind of questions uh, with uh, like prompt life cycle what will be the life cycle of a prompt so you can get you can expect these kind of questions uh, in prompt engineering section the second section is Agent 4 Concepts. So even it, it contributes around 30% in the exam and uh, relatively 18 questions. And uh, you'll learn around reasoning engine that powers the agents and standard and custom topics. How agent interprets what is being typed in the chat section and uh, it assigns a topic. It selects a topic where most of the questions are related to and then the topic also links to an action. So the related action is performed. So you will learn more while you study for the certification and uh, you will you will have uh, questions related to standard and custom actions. And user security is one of the most important aspect here, like what kind of security is needed for the objects and the other sections that are being referred by an agent. and uh, how to test an agent it is a new new feature that has been introduced uh, uh, recently like uh, because uh, since we are using generative ai the prompts and the agents and the topics that are being discussed uh, are to be fine tuned before they are applied in the real time so the testing center is one of the things that was introduced and uh, finally like uh, agent life cycle like from the development to deployment how agent transitions from each of the phases so questions related to those will be asked further it'll, it'll the agent force is related to other clouds like how agent agent force is applied on other clouds has been discussed however uh, they put more emphasis on data cloud since uh, agent force is deeply integrated with data cloud so you can have questions like uh, questions around agent force data library uh, how to improve uh, your agent responses when it is tailored to agent force data library and you will see good number of questions on retrievers to ground ai responses with trusted and uh, structured emphasis on data cloud another uh, section here is uh, agent force in service cloud and the questions uh, here you will see around uh, knowledge articles like how 
how agents uh, retrieve their data from knowledge articles and uh, how agents are to be connected to right digital channels. Recognize uh, agent force AI feature, which feature suits better for uh, which kind of uh, uh, AI activity, like for example, summarization, next picks, best action, or knowledge search. And finally, you see questions uh, in Salesforce agent cloud, and you see around six questions that is 10%. So most of the questions are based on the sales scenarios and what kind of a generative AI tool best fits to uh, solve this problem. Uh, you, will, you will know how to use uh, sales agents and SDR or sales coach to drive productivity and insights. So you will see so many questions, uh, sales related questions and where you apply sales agents uh, versus uh, SDRs or sales coaches. So the exam is a blend of AI prompting, agent design, grounding strategies, and cloud integrations. Uh, it will be the focus on uh, real-time scenarios, key terminologies, and uh, Salesforce best practice to succeed. So one of the key things uh, that will be helpful in your preparation is making a, a, a notes where you know what each of the service does in each of these sections. So when you, when you are very clear about the service and the application, I think you almost crack the certification. Passing score uh, is 73%. That is, you need to get uh, around 44 questions right out of 60. And uh, you will have three options for each of the questions. Probabilistically, like uh, out of uh, three options, one option might be correct. So whatever option you're putting is 33.3% correct. However, uh, there is a fair chance you get confused. So it's better you create some flashcards where you write a service and then what that service is, you, where that service is used. And uh, resources is uh, agent blazer status. Uh, I'll show you like how to get there. And one more thing is, if at all it is a lengthy route for you and if you are in a requirement to uh, finish off the certification soon, uh, there is a certification prep uh, trailhead. Go through the trailhead and then uh, try to go through the help documents as well because most of the time trailheads, uh, they show the application but uh, help documents will show you like what each service is used for. So let me show you some resources where you can see them. So this is the first resource that is your agent blazer status. So this is a recommended uh, course study. So I've done uh, all of the things except for the capstone project uh, here on the agent force for service cloud uh, super badge. So this champion and innovator, these are the badges you will get once you finish them. If you have good enough time to learn and understand, I would recommend going through all of these uh, champion and innovator badges. You can have these flashy badges on your LinkedIn as well if at all you are interested. So it will give you some good understanding. And uh, one more thing uh, what I would recommend is going through all these uh, uh, sections. Because let's say open this one, it will show you what kind of questions you can expect and uh, where to get the topics from. And like I mentioned, uh, do create some flashcards like what is a functionality and where that functionality is used. And one of the key things is whenever you go through these resources, so there will be some help documents as well. So try to go through those uh, help documents. So that will be really helpful uh, whenever you are uh, able to recollect some answers. And uh, by the time I have given the certification till now, I think there are so many new projects and uh, modules have come up. Uh, like this one, I'm seeing it for the first time, but uh, I would definitely say that uh, you finish off uh, all these modules. So, and uh, prepare some flashcards, uh, like what, what service is used for which, uh, which use case. I think you will be able to clear the certification quite easily. And one learning for me in this entire process is I'll make sure I'll mention the date or at least month which I recorded the video so that whenever you watch this video later in time, 
you know when this video is recorded. I would still recommend watching the old, old video as I've discussed uh, my personal journey on how my machine learning course that turned into whatever AI we are seeing in the today's state. So it is a very interesting journey and it will give you some background information on how this particular technology has evolved over time. Thank you so much for your love and support. Like and subscribe to Cloud Applied.